All forms of energy are important to our economy. They all have a place, but it's a place they have to earn in a free marketplace. The government uh, has no role in picking winners or losers. That's called crony capitalism. For too long, the American Treasury has been a tip jar for the favored friends of the few in power. I don't favor subsidies or grants to alternative energies, and I don't favor grants and tax breaks to the oil industry. Let every form of energy compete in a fair marketplace. In that way, we can get the lowest priced energy and begin to grow this economy again. The science of climate change uh, is clear and indisputable. The planet is getting warmer, the ice caps are melting, and sea the seas are on the rise. And we've seen that right here along our own coast in Delaware. Those are all me measurable, they're scientific fa findings, and they've been accepted across the board. The Republicans in the House and the majority of the House have voted several times to deny and to ignore that science. We do that at our own peril. And that's why I support an all the above energy policy that Senator Carper talked about a moment ago with particular focus on renewable energies. And the fact of the matter is to get renewable energies uh, technologies at the place where they need to be, they're going to require a support from the government. It was the case and it is the case today that oil and gas industry enjoys certain uh, incentives uh, as well. Clearly, that's a mature industry and uh, people could argue whether they need those, uh, those kinds of support, but we have an opportunity to compete with other countries around the world on a whole new industry in wind, solar, and other renewable technologies. And of course, the cheapest and less, least polluting unit of energy is the one that not, is not used and we need to focus on conservation as well. The appropriateness of the level of subsidy on alternative energy. Uh, according to the University of Delaware, the, the, the best, the highest form, the most effective form of alternate energy production isn't production at all. It's conservation. Conservation is the first step and is a key into lowering our energy uh, needs. It's great to be investing. and I think the government should invest in research and support research and provide competitive grants for research. But to subsidize not yet ready for market alternative energy products because it's making us feel better about our energy production. It's putting into place what's not cost efficient, what the market can't support. And we're putting our reliance on on these alternate forms of energy that can't yet be supported by the market because they're not yet ready for market. What that does actually is it drives up energy cost. And when you drive up energy cost, it's actually a very form of a, a regressive tax. It hurts the less able to pay first. It hurts everybody because everybody needs energy. So we need a smart, balanced approach. You're going to hear me say that probably 10 times during this balance. We need to balance conservation with research, with the ability uh, to make sure we provide effective alternate sources of energy to all. And the lesson is to rid ourselves of the dependence on foreign oil, a lot of control by people who don't like us very much and frankly use it to our money when we buy their oil to, to, to hurt us. We've got to be smarter than, than that. Again, the, the, the approach, the policy of this administration, which I uh, strongly support, is an above, all the above approach. We're the Saudi Arabia of coal. We're becoming the Saudi Arabia of natural gas. We're moving toward energy independence in terms of the oil um, and actually becoming a, a net export of oil. In about three years, we expect to be able to create solar energy grid uh, that can actually be sold on the grid with grid parity. And uh, that's a very good thing, I think, for, for all of us. The roles of the government in this regard are, number one, basic R&D research. Basic, where would we be with nuclear power if we hadn't put in a whole lot of research and money 60, 70 years ago? We wouldn't have it. We're putting a fair amount of money into basic R&D for solar fair amount of money into basic R&D for biofuels, fair amount of money into R&D for, for wind. And the idea is not to continue to provide those subsidies or those investments forever, but for a limited period of time until they're able to actually fly on their own. Second responsibility besides uh, tax policy, federal government can actually play a role in creating a market, creating a market in, uh, for, for these products when they're, when they're developed. And lastly, to provide tax policy to encourage people to actually buy some of these products, not forever, but initially when they come onto the marketplace.